What a beautiful weather here. <laughs> it's inside the greenhouse. 32 it's degrees warm. outside with snow on the ground and we're sitting in the greenhouse sitting in 70 degree Fahrenheit. With a cup of with coffee. With a cup of coffee <laughs> to make it all go down easy. And you know what? I just have my t-shirt, lemon t-shirt. If you love lemon, yeah, cause she's bitter. get a t-shirt. <laughs> All right, guys, so today in this video, we are going to discuss the most common diseases on citrus. So we will be uh, discussing each one of this, and then we'll share with you how are you going to manage your citrus in terms of disease and how do you prevent it and treat the problem. Remember that prophylactic is better than treatment. So spray mm -hmm. your citrus plants on a regular basis to prevent them from getting the disease be it from an insect or from bacteria or fungus treat it ahead of time it's so much better so mm -hmm. we're going to go over the very worst one first so you have a list yeah i got a, i got a little list here a little mm -hmm. cheat sheet because some of these names are, are uh, in latin and you don't use them every day and you need a little cheat sheet to help you get through that but the greening disease is the first one we want to mm -hmm. talk about also known as hulong bean which is spread by what, what, what was it spread by? How to say that? Silid? Silid. 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 It's like a little moth mm -hmm. with its butt up in the air and its head down into the to the ground. It carries a bacteria when it ingests, the, when it bites it. into the uh, to the citrus plant and injects mm -hmm. the bacteria. Now, not all of the cilids are infected, though. Or Just carrying, some of them. yeah. Yeah. So, how are you going to uh, control? this problem how, how do you manage well, your citrus in terms that natural predators first is a good way of uh, insects that prey on the ciliate insect that's mm -hmm. that's a good one first they're using all kind of treatments in Florida and California have had a nightmare with this thing to where they've actually had to destroy and burn all of their mm -hmm. orchards mm -hmm. Because once it gets infected in your tree, there is no cure for it. You just dig the plant up and throw it on a fire to kill it. Mm -hmm. It's kill a, it's a serious disease. It's, it's really kind of a hard disease to detect because it, in the beginning stages, it looks so much like so many of the other uh, ailments that your citrus create, mm -hmm. like a lack of magnesium. It looks like it could be lack of iron. It looks like mm -hmm. a lot of different things and it's splotchiness and it's sometimes really hard to diagnose. Mm -hmm. So so your prevention and management is to remove the infected tree and then burn yeah. it. Yeah, so but that you want to make sure, in order to find out for sure though, you've got to take a sample of it and send it to the laboratory. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> if you have it, you're going to have the agriculture people coming out to your facility. You have to though. Yeah, and they're going to... Because you don't want to spread that yeah. through. That is what That's why when you go to buy a citrus plant, it'll say on there, uh, do not ship to California, Florida, and some of the other states that Arizona, are in the Arizona? huh Arizona, Arizona New Mexico, mm -hmm. because they're in the citrus production business, and they don't want you to send cuttings. Mm -hmm. If you're um, because it can if, wipe out if you live in those states, production. you have to buy your cuttings through uh, one of the universities out there that have. Man, they put them through a sterilization mm -hmm. process to make sure that the tissue culture is right. clean and sterile. So that is the uh, greening disease. That's a greening disease. So the second, uh, so the second uh, disease is a greasy spot. Uh, greasy spot, which is also uh, Phytophthora citrus. The, uh, yeah, that's caused from a from a fungus. Mm, it's a fungus uh, disease, and it can overwinter. And uh, so that is the most common citrus problem, especially in the greenhouse, and mostly in the greenhouse when we have two tanks. In our greenhouse, we have two 1,000 gallon tanks in our greenhouse so where we raised uh, koi. Uh -huh. And uh, the humidity was too high in here, and we were getting a lot of problems with that. We got rid of one tank, shut mm -hmm. it down, and we've got rid of the problem at the same time. That was and last now year. We not only this have year. one tank going. Yeah. So, humidity increases uh, fungus, it thrives in the fungus, and it is warm, they like warm temperature. And I have a question from one of our uh, viewers. She was uh, asking about, I have a humidifier which increases the humidity in, the, in, the, in my citrus, but when the humidity is too high, I have also an electric fan, can I shut off the fan? Can she shut off the fan? No, you want to keep the fan going. The fan mm -hmm. helps create the circulation. It also uh, makes it difficult for some of your little flying gnats to uh, 
land on your plants too. Mm -hmm. it, it has a couple functions for that, but you have to have air circulation. You need movement. <laughs> Lack of air will per will uh, perpetuate disease. Mm -hmm. So, so how do you identify this uh, phytophthora thing disease? This uh, greasy, greasy spot. spot. So the first stage you notice that the uh, the leaf is starting yellow. to yellow, yep. and then when you look at you know underside of the leaves, you have this a little like little brown brown spot, spot like it's a something smeared. like a water. Yeah, that's not a real sharp, uh -huh. not a real sharp brown dot like but we you're will gonna see put on, that the, on the uh, screen there. on the scale, the scale disease. It's mm -hmm. more of a just a little brown ring or like a yeah. spot it's a like spot. spot and then it, it raises the uh, and eventually the leaf will completely fall off on its own you don't even mm -hmm. have to touch it and pretty soon your whole tree will be dropping leaves like crazy mm -hmm. doesn't kill the plant um, you will get a matter of about three weeks to a month mm -hmm. you'll start to see new little green leaves starting to emerge mm -hmm. and by I'll tell you what once that leaf starts turning yellow once that leaf starts turning yellow there's no bringing it back it's mm -hmm. gonna, it's gonna drop. It's gonna drop off. Uh, the best thing you can do is remove the leaf so that the fungus doesn't spread to the other leaves. Get rid of it mm -hmm. as fast as you can. Remove any of the leaves on your citrus tree that has uh, any of the greasy spots on the bottom. Or if you see them starting to turn yellow, just go ahead and cut them off. Don't grow back. So that is mostly a uh, basic, you know, principle in gardening. Right. Removing any uh, debris on the base of your citrus because it can hiber hibernate. What, a, what, hibernate. About, what about the leaves that are falling and, they, and they, they're sitting on the soil in the pot? It can also uh, you know, grow in that, in the soil. Right. So you have to make sure that everything is clean and uh, allow no uh, debris in the soil just to minimize or uh, control and prevent that fungus. So how are you, that is the treatment of the uh, fungus, right? You have to remove infected areas, remove the leaves, uh, clean the surrounding of your tree so that it doesn't spread to another uh, near, nearby citrus. Treatment for it is going to be a fungicide. Mm -hmm. You can use a copper uh, fungicide or you can use neem products. The Azatec Plus is really mm -hmm. good for that. Uh, spray the bottom of the leaves and the tops. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're outdoors, Every time it rains, you're going to have to retreat it again, just because of the fact that most of the rain is going to it's going to wash your, your treatment off. So mm -hmm. do it in the morning or do it late in the evening, just before the sun goes down. You don't want to spray your plants and then have the hot sunlight mm -hmm. uh, because it will magnify that heat on the leaf and will cause it to overheat it and cause stress to the leaf. So do it in the morning, allow it giving it time to dry. Okay. Exactly. All right. So we one. are down to. Uh, second common disease, the third common disease Melanos is melanose citrus disease. disease. It's a fungal disease caused by the fungus the Aporte citri. And the symptoms of this particular one are dark, sunken spots on the fruit, often with a raised corky center. And the disease is uh, spread by splashing water when you're watering mm -hmm. your plant and you're pouring too much water on the soil. The soil is splashing up onto your plant and it's spreading the fungus from the soil. So uh, mostly so we don't have that problem in Ohio. Tools, contaminated soil, uh, remove, remove the effective branches and destroy any infected fruit mm -hmm. by applying fungicides. Copper-based fungicides, Azatec, are going to control that particular one. So, okay, so that's, so that's, that's mostly the melanos. We don't have that problem never, never seen it but if you guys have that problem so that is your probably down uh, in Florida treatment or, or money California management. probably have that right yes depending on where you where you live because you know the the higher temperature is favorable with all not just okay, the next one is another fungal disease called phytophora gumosis uh, this is another fungal disease caused by the pathogen phytophthora SPP period, whichever that means. Uh, this disease affects a wide range of fruit trees, including citrus, apples, stone fruits. This disease includes a dark, gummy lesion on the bark of your trees and cankers on the fruit. Cankers like cancer. Mm -hmm. All right. The treatment is uh, fungicides to control the spread. The ingredient must have methanoxum. 
phosphorus acid and copper oxychloride are effective in controlling the disease. And in addition, it's important to remove the most commonly affected branches and help the spread of the disease. Mm -hmm. so. so anything you suspicious or any any sign and symptoms of your citrus of any type of disease you have to act it accordingly don't just let it be because it might be okay for the citrus during the time but as the disease progress you know as the disease progresses then you might have a hard time or difficult time getting rid of that but actually fungus you cannot get rid of fungus, but you can control and manage its occurrence. Because fungus is a nature, is by nature, you know, so you can manage it. Yeah. So now... Canker. Canker. Yes. This one's a little more common than some of these other ones. Did you know that I, we had canker a long time ago with our, with our other tree? No. That was not citrus. It was a canker, and uh, what happened was that that crossing the that tree when there was a uh, strong wind and it breaks the branches and something infected on it. Mm. So, what causes the canker? Caused by a virus known as Citrus tristeza virus, known as CTB. Symptoms include yellowing of the leaves, stunted growth, and small hard fruit. Citrus cancer can spread really quickly and uh, very, very difficult to control. The, the treatment for it is aimed at controlling the spread of the virus, removing the infected tree, and replanting with a healthy tree. Important to practice good sanitation and pest control to reduce the spread of the virus. Chemical mm -hmm. treatments will also be used to help control the spread of the virus. So this is the second one that's yes. being caused by uh, by, by a virus, yeah. yeah, that's that's a bad one. Not wow. as bad as the hulon bean, though. <laughs> yeah, that hulon the, bean the cancer. Bad. I've seen the hulon bean virus or bacteria. I've seen it actually wipe out entire uh, citrus groves. They the whole I mean the whole plant is dead. It's brown. Mm -hmm. Leaves are dead brown. The whole orchard and the uh, farmers are cutting the trees down stacking them up in the middle of the fields and burning them yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. sad yeah. so to the, what they're doing now is they're actually putting like greenhouses building poop houses over their citrus trees just to prevent this stupid little insect from being able to, to get into the, to the greenhouse and, and if you're going to like a lot of these different uh, tissue culture places where they're propagating these citrus cuttings the stems mm -hmm. You have to be, uh, you have to have sanitized shoes on, and you have to have like a hazmat suit on. They just really protective of this uh, citrus industry mm -hmm. because uh, you don't want to trans transfer. It, no, you know. So I guess it's that easy to transfer that mm -hmm. they don't even allow guests to come in to see the facility. You can't mm -hmm. go in there and buy a bunch of stuff. You have to order it. Yes. And it's very controlled. So. That is uh, still going on. That uh, greening still going on nowadays. And uh, if you live in the colder temperature, like in uh, mostly in Hawaii, we don't have greening. I I don't. No, because we don't have that much citrus Because about temperature Ohio. probably. So only with those uh, warm temperature region, you're more likely to get that problems of wangnong bean. Wangnong bean. So what uh, what is the other common? Uh, well, those are the most common ones. Uh, there's another one here that so you mentioned now. is called Pythopathora foot rot. And this is caused by having too much water in your, a, in your plant or in the ground. It's a fungal infection of the, of the root system by a pathogen called Phytophthora. Commonly so, found in wet and humid conditions. And uh, the treatment, of course, is removing any of the infected material from the soil and improving drainage and air aeration. So that is the uh, cause of over watering. Over so if you water. watch the other video when we discuss about the soil uh, environment, so by combining bark and uh, some other that's why perlites. That's why when you have your citrus in containers, you want them in well. Raining, 
media. Uh, that's why, like in, in Florida, places like that, they're growing in very sandy soil where the water goes straight through to the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get a lot of heavy, heavy, heavy rain where it's raining for like five, six, seven days and you get some flooding, that's going to kill your citrus trees from drowning, <laughs> drowning yeah. the roots and causing fungal infections. So it is, you know, everything happening in the citrus is bad to your soil. Right. So it's kind of like athletes' feet for citrus trees. I was just. Uh, That's why you get athletes' feet in humans from two, from sweaty feet. You don't change your socks and getting fungal infections. I was just uh, telling you. Rot. I I was telling him. I said, you know what? When I am in the greenhouse, I always look at my plants and see if the plants is stressed. So plants and humans have similarities in dealing with stress. So if the plant is stressed out, then disease and pest will havoc your plants. So it's the same as human. And then he said, I know a lot of people having a stress and oh my goodness, why they are still healthy? And I said, well, maybe they went, you know, to someone. So they are not really getting that stress inside your body because you have someone to vent out so <laughs> yeah, been out already. <laughs> so that is uh that's it. that is that's it guys so so what we what would be the overall uh management you do to your citrus you, to avoid this problem well management mm -hmm. good air good aeration okay pruning aeration. pruning inside your citrus trees to make sure that they have good air circulation so you don't want all your branches crisscrossing each other and choking mm -hmm. each other out you want them to be able to be opened up that would and be this good. is happy yeah yeah have good drainage on your in your plants using a good uh, media made just for citrus you can't you cannot treat all plants the same you can't use the same media that you use for your philodendrons or for your for your uh, your Hoyas and it has some to of be, these you can. It has you can to be use the, the right same, mix. Yeah, you can use almost the same mix for your orchids that you use for your uh, citrus plants. You just want just a little bit more sand or a little bit more soil in there for, for the citrus. But, uh, mm -hmm. you, you want to drain good. Next, you want to have lighting. Okay, and this is something I want to talk about real just real quick because we're going to do another video on this later. And that is the lighting for each specific type of plant that you have. Your citrus plant needs about eight. To 10 hours of sunlight every day good mm -hmm. yes. full light and I have seen friends that have uh, bought citrus plants and they put them in a dark corner in their house not even near a window like 12 feet away from a window I'm like oh my god your citrus plant's gonna die here and they go oh really why <laughs> you're not taking care you know of what it. I'm going to surprise you Greg oh yeah you're gonna you're gonna give me a lemon I'm going to surprise you and you need lemon. Yeah. Oh we my drink, god. We drink lemon it's water so every single day. How our our how citrus trees right oh. now are just loaded. Look at I this. This is, that's a Meyer lemon. <laughs> Hold that up here to the camera. Let them see. These things are one and a half times the size of a Eureka lemon and they are so good. Oh my god, smell good. Yeah. So take a slice of this, it. squeeze it in your water. We take a slice, put it in soup, whatever. It is so good. So getting back to what I was talking about, when you buy a plant, especially beginning gardeners, people who are just starting to get into plants, house plants, Be careful and stuff, the flower. Yeah, sorry. Know the lighting requirements of your plants, and uh, that's that's very important too for disease prevention and for just the health of the plant. Period. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then of course, like I said before, use prophylactic resin treatment. Spray your plants on a regular basis. I, we spray these in here once a week, once a week. And I'll sometimes see one that she misses, I go behind her, I catch it. If I see one that's yellowing, I we discuss it. I say, have you treated this? What's going on with this plant? And she'll say, uh, I did this or I did that. And I'll say, okay, it's good then. So work together as a team if you guys are at home. Mm -hmm. It is so great to have your own lemon, like this one. That's right. And it's bigger than what you bought in. Oh yeah, I bought a bag of uh, Meyer lemons at the grocery store. They get them at they get them at the Giant Eagle grocery store about once a year. They get these little bags in, and I bought them, and they were like half the size of these. They were like uh, kumquats. <laughs> They're really small. These are really huge, and these trees put out some really nice sized fruit. Mm -hmm. Some of them as big as I've had them as big as my fist before. Yeah, and there's another one down there. I don't wanna yeah. take it out. We eat so much of this fruit. And it'll be, uh, 
it'll be ripening up all summer long, and then in the fall we'll be eating a lot of lemons. They like, ripe, they'll be ripening outside when we carry them outside. Remember that when uh, when the COVID hits. <laughs> what? I what I did I gathered like maybe ten citrus fruit here and then slice and put it in the fridge and I keep putting that in a warm water and have you guys drink I got so, every I got, day. I got so and tired he complained, of drinking lemon water. Said, Enough like, of the lemon water, oh, man. Come on, can I have a drink without lemon? I said no. Drink lemon every day. Because and but you're good. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Gives you energy. All right. So this is for now, guys. And uh, we are. Uh, we got two more, two more videos that we want to take, uh, put together for you on Sisters Care. One on fertilizers and another one on lighting, mm -hmm. artificial lighting. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. And until then, this is Greg Stevens and Marceline Nas saying, peace out. Baby. Peace out, baby. <laughs>